Did SpaceX just achieve a major breakthrough? Unveiling the secrets behind Starship's latest flight and changes made in the launch pad for the next time. The third flight test of Starship ultimately occurred on March 14th, as several of us saw. Following that, the launch pad for the upcoming Starship is undergoing some incredible alterations. But before starting the video, if you are new to our channel, do subscribe and press the bell icon so you will never miss any updates in the future. Let's dive into the video. The rocket, standing 120 meters tall and weighing over 5,000 tons when fully fueled, took off during the test flight from Starbase Spaceport, which is situated in Boca Chica, Texas, on the shores of the Gulf of Mexico. SpaceX's Starship vision expands going beyond simple orbital missions with the ultimate goal of delivering humans to Mars and the Moon. On this mission, the Starship accomplished its first ever worldwide flight. But at the crucial re-entry phase into Earth's atmosphere, communication was lost and the test came to an abrupt stop. It is thought that the spacecraft was not strong enough to survive the severe re-entry circumstances even though SpaceX had not intended to retrieve it for this mission, maybe burning up or disintegrating before it reaches its target. But it is also critical to take into account how the flight would affect terrestrial infrastructure, in particular the launch pad and its associated facilities which make up the Stage Zero system. After the mission, SpaceX started constructing a second launch tower and working on several launch pad enhancements and modifications. Following Flight 3, preliminary evaluations indicated that the launch pad was in comparatively decent shape. Although there was not as much damage as in the previous flight, there was wear and tear. Images taken after the launch revealed that the 33 Raptor engine's intense heat had discolored the launch site's protective steel plates. Additionally, there were indications of partial melting and scorching in several areas of the orbital launch mount, such as the booster rapid disconnect cover. Not spared was the launch tower itself. It appeared that the ship's fast disconnect had migrated from its initial location, most likely as a result of liftoff vibrations. Additionally, several pictures seemed to indicate that the Starship didn't launch exactly straight, raising the possibility of alignment problems with the launch mechanism. On March 19th, SpaceX started attending to these problems right away. On the launch tower, workers could be seen carrying out what seemed like reinforcing chores. Due to noticeable deterioration, the booster quick disconnect's rear part was removed, perhaps for inspections and repairs. The liquid oxygen and methane fuel lines were also taken out of the booster quick disconnect, suggesting potential maintenance or replacement. Apart from repairing and modernizing the existing launch pad SpaceX is also concentrating on building a new launch tower. The company's attention on the most recent flight is probably the reason why the process of stacking its segments hasn't begun. Yet a rapid acceleration is anticipated. The small launch pad damages are insignificant in light of what SpaceX accomplished. Successful propellant transfer demonstration was one of the major accomplishments of this third flight. A crucial capacity for upcoming space trips to far off places like Mars. Because it could expand the scope and duration of human exploration missions, this technology is very interesting to NASA because it fits in with the objectives of the Artemis program. The teams diligently verified the weather 60 minutes before the launch. The launch director moved forward with the propellant loading procedure, injecting liquid oxygen and methane into the Starship and its extremely hefty rocket, taking advantage of the favorable conditions. Due to the sheer amount of propellant involved, in addition to the technological constraints, this process must be finished in T45 minutes or less. When the 33 Raptor engines of the Super Heavy were fired, they would use about 40,000 pounds of propellant every second. The stage separation happened at T plus 2 minutes and 44 seconds. Except for 3, all of the boost engines shut down to allow for a controlled separation, and this was achieved perfectly. Shortly after the six engines on the upper stack started, initiating the spacecraft's orbit, the booster started a boost backburn during ascent, reorienting itself for a descent back to Earth. The onboard cameras recorded these maneuvers in stunning detail, displaying the booster's controlled descent and re-entry maneuvers. The booster executed a landing burn with the goal of a gentle splashdown as it got closer to the Gulf of Mexico. For SpaceX to accomplish its goal of reusable rockets, even though the feed was lost just before landing, these maneuvers are essential. The launch attracted a lot of interest because of the crucial technology being tested as well as the visual spectacle created by the water suppression system at the launch pad. Throughout this operation, Starship's stability is crucial since any unfavorable consequences could compromise the mission's success. 
The performance of the propellant transfer will be evaluated by NASA and SpaceX engineers after a thorough examination of the flight data. Their areas of interest include the conditions under which the propellant was delivered to the Raptor engines and the fluid dynamics inside the tanks. To guarantee that the engines can be dependably restarted in orbit, this examination is essential. The test flight was not without its difficulties though, as unexpected vehicle roll rates during the coast phase forced the abandonment of an orbit relight plan for a single Raptor engine. SpaceX gained important insights from the data collected up until the loss of signal even though the vehicle was lost during this phase. The heat shield tiles and the results of re-entry were visible on the live feed. SpaceX plans to launch five starships by 2024. The first one was launched on March 14th and the other four are scheduled to launch over the next eight months or one launch every two months. This timeline may be difficult because each launch requires extensive preparation. To help with this tight schedule, SpaceX is nevertheless extending its launch locations. The building of a sizable new facility at the Starbase Complex in Brownsville, Texas is at the forefront of these expansion efforts. Musk has declared that he will invest $100 million in a massive five-story industrial building. The planned Starbase office structure would take up to 15 football fields worth of space. In comparison, its size is around 25% of Boeing's biggest assembly building, which is used to construct the 777 aircraft. The Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation states that the project's goal is to improve SpaceX's manufacturing. Construction is expected to begin shortly with an early 2025 completion date scheduled. Over 1.3 million square feet of office space and a factory specifically designed for the Starship project will be housed in this new building. The project's proximity to the launch site facilities logistics and supports the accelerated manufacturing and launch schedule. As SpaceX continues to make headlines for its accomplishments, its rivals, like Blue Origin, are facing their difficulties. Musk and Jeff Bezos, two of the richest people on the globe, established both businesses in the early 2000s. Additionally, both businesses have been creating heavy lift vehicles. The Starship is a fully reusable spacecraft created by SpaceX to transport people to Mars and beyond. It has already carried out three test flights with its Starship vehicle, even though none of them were successful, the data they yielded was essential in helping to further hone and enhance the spacecraft's design. Blue Origin, on the other hand, has been developing the Glenn Rocket, a heavy lift vehicle intended for orbital travel. Blue Origin has not yet carried out a test flight of the new Glenn despite years of development. In addition to Blue Origin's struggles to stay competitive, United Launch Alliance is also experiencing financial difficulties and may soon be sold to a different business. The question of who would purchase ULA has come up, with one unexpected suggestion being that SpaceX might be interested. At first look, this appears implausible because SpaceX is already a major participant in the industry and it would be difficult to acquire a rival like ULA. However, this concept is out there because Textron and Cerebrus, the other three businesses listed as potential purchasers, may not be willing to spend as much for ULA. Practically speaking, SpaceX might have less rivalry if it were to purchase ULA. Purchasing smaller businesses from larger ones is a common practice in business to lessen risk and competition. By purchasing ULA, SpaceX may get greater market share and the ability to negotiate better launch dates and costs. Additionally, SpaceX may gain access to ULA's highly valued contracts with the US government and military. In addition to bringing in new business, this would increase the stability and diversity of SpaceX's revenue. Additionally, SpaceX might gain from ULA's technological know-how and expertise. ULA has a reputation for precise and dependable launches. Thus, SpaceX may leverage ULA's technology to enhance its services. That's all. I hope you liked it. Don't forget to give our video a thumbs up and share it. Also, check out the video here lined up for you.